so here we are, welcome to Monkey Drone Collective, your place for enough action figures, cosplay and props. Today this is a kind of special video here. This one's going out specially to Suez 12 from Denmark, one of my fellow Britnoff, uh, fellow Britnoff member. Uh, over on Britnoff we were running a wee, uh, co not, not a competition, just a kind of thing that we partake in, called the Mod Swap. Uh, Mod Swap is basically a kind of secret Santa competition, but for Nerf Blasters, we all put our names in a hat. Uh, names got picked out at random and you and allocated a fellow Nerf modder to make a blaster for you know, to try and do a bit of research and uh, build them a blaster something, I don't know, something they wanted something you wanted to do, something quirky something fun uh, there was a limit, minimum spend of £30 I went way over that on this build but what great fun this has been uh, my most complicated build I've ever done so far pushed my, pushed my knowledge and limits of what I've been done Helps me learn lots of new stuff. It's been great fun to do it, and I absolutely loved it. So I present to you the Dane Molisher. Uh, Suez 12's from Denmark. Uh, did a bit of research. He didn't want a Springer, clip-fed Springer blaster, which is what I originally had planned. I was just going to do him a nice painted uh, Alpha Trooper or Rampage or something. But uh, he, there was when you entered Mod Swap, you could do a list of likes and and likes and dislikes. Uh, He's all he's a quite capable modder as well, so he's already building himself nice nice strifes and rapid strikes and other blasters. So I didn't want to do him just one of them, so I thought I'd go for something kinda of quirky and something a bit different. So what we have here, this was a Rebel Power Bell. Uh, we've had we've done a Danish themed paint job on it. We've got the kind of Demolisher name there on both sides, the same on both sides. I've done this uh the kind of metallic black here, we've kind of kind of coppery dry brush onto this as well camera's picking all this up and then lots of nice uh, gloss finish the red paints a metallic red and a metallic white for the cross as well so it's a nice shiny blingy blaster this has had a completely rewild go over the internals in the next segment but it's completely rewired uh, and we've put a few different bits and surprises inside which you'll see but you'll also notice this this one thing in the background so it's not just this it also comes with this which is a shoulder pad if you can see it really so what we've got we've got EVA foam 10 mil EVA th foam here and this is covered in warbler thermal plastic just to give it a bit bit of sturdiness bit of protection uh, I didn't want to paint the foam it can flake off quite a lot so I went with the warbler instead that is then mounted onto this kind of neoprene shoulder mount so the straps go across your chest the straps around your arm it's all adjustable the blaster is then mounts it's kind of a shoulder mounting blaster so you slot it in the back here slots in there the blaster mounts on that there's clips around the side here so it locks into position around the top and around the back and you'll notice on the base of the blaster here there's a connection port a dean's connector which then plugs into this connector on the shoulder pad. So you plug this in. You have the blaster mounted in the shoulder pad. And you have a shoulder cannon. The Dean's connector from the sink goes round. This is all wired into the shoulder pad. And on the front here, you'll notice this little flap on the front. And this is a secondary trigger. So you can wear this on your shoulder as a shoulder cannon and run it from the secondary trigger off the shoulder pad. As I said, this was a great fun to build. It was really, after, I was kind of stuck for ideas what I was going to do, uh, and this was an idea I'd had of building it for myself for quite a while, uh, after seeing the kind of famous Captain Xavier loadout video where he had his shoulder cannon and stuff, and I thought I want to build myself one of them. Uh, but yeah, I've ended up building one, but I'm sadly going to have to stick this in the post and post it away to Suez 12. Anyway, uh, I really hope he enjoys it. We'll do a wee internal vid, wee quick uh, shot of the internals so you can see what I've done inside. And I'll show you it in shoulder cannon mode and give you a wee firing demo of it in shoulder cannon mode. Anyway, I'll get back to you in a minute. Cheers. Hi there. So I just thought I'd give you a quick overview of the internals of this blaster before I close it all up. So what we've done here... Uh, we've ripped everything out, everything's been completely rewired, took out all these old PCB circuit boards and switches. 
and there was a thermistor thing on the motor cover there. So we ripped everything out completely, there's absolutely no stock wiring left, it's all being completely rewired with 16 gauge silicone wire. Uh, but we've added a few things in here. Uh, if you can see around the back here, we've added a Dean's connector here onto the motor, so that can be disconnected and the coal firing mechanism can be taken out without touching any of the rest of the wiring. On the battery tray, we've connected the battery tray here with an XT60 connector, making the battery tray kind of modular as well. So this can be taken off and you can just plug a LiPo straight in there as well, or you can run it off the stock battery tray with alkalines or with the, or with IMRs. I had tested it with IMRs and alkalines already. It has an insane rate of fire with the IMRs in it, uh, but my LiPo is not charged to give it a test. But I'll do that next. I'll show you that once I've got it all up and going. Uh, what I've done is I've replaced the normal micro switch, the cherry uh, switch, so it's much stronger and be able to take the lipo power and everything without melting. We've lubed, re-lubed the trigger here and seated the switch. Had to do a bit of carving out here to fit the switch in. That's just all hot glued into place. And then the trigger activates the switch nicely. And then we've got this extra wiring coming down to the handle here, and this is the special part of the blaster. So this is going to run a secondary circuit, which is here, which is going to run the secondary trigger. So this is connected with a Dean's connector and just plugs in. So slot this in here. So there we are. That now runs on a second circuit. And we've got another cherry switch down here, which is going to get mounted to the shoulder pad for the shoulder cannon and when you activate this trigger the blaster fires as well through the secondary trigger so that connects up through here up into there and into the battery compartment and into the motor block and it's all wired back in so it's got two separate switch circuits on it uh, it was a bit complicated took me a while to get my head around it but yeah it was a uh, good uh, bit of room in here it's quite tight fitting the xt60 in but it just sits up here against the mechanism and the Dean's connector for the battery for the motor block just sits in there nicely so we'll get this sealed up we'll go go over the paint job and we'll go over everything else with the blaster anyway we have it in a shoulder cannon configuration so as you can see the shoulder pad here with the wobbler on top gives it a bit of armor this is fairly it's not going to go anyway we've got strapped in at the top strapped in at the back and you can see the Dean's connector plug plugging into the back of the handle there so that plugs in and activates the secondary trigger, which is under this little button on the front of the shoulder pad here, as you've seen. So, as I said, this is, doesn't go anywhere, sits nice and flush, so wherever you're looking at, this thing's pointing. And what we'll do, we'll just empty it off here. I've just run this on alkaline batteries now, but obviously you can run it on IMRs and uh, LiPo as well. So here we go. <laughs> There we are, 10 darts. Everything you can do that with your blaster in your hand, everything. So that's it, shoulder cannon mode. As I say, it's not the easiest thing. The strap is adjustable around the arm and around the chest here. It's not the easiest thing to get on and off, so it's not something you'll be doing in a hurry. You either have it in blaster mode or shoulder cannon mode. But there we go. This is for Suez 12 from Denmark, the Dane Molisher. I uh, hope he enjoys his uh, Britnoff mod swap uh, uh, blaster here. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. And uh, we'll see you again in another video. Make sure to check us out on Facebook. Like, subscribe on Facebook, here on YouTube, and over on Instagram. Thanks, guys. See you later.